Um, now we like to hear um, the voices from um, voices of women and children from Fukushima. Uh, when we started to organize this event, uh, we thought about who would be the right person to come to New York to talk about the situation in Fukushima. One of the um, potential candidates, she's not here today, but one of the uh, candidates was one of the uh, members of Human Rights Now who still reside in Fukushima. And she's also a mother of five, and she was pregnant at the time of the explosion. So I thought she would be the right person to talk and share her stories. But, uh, um, well, she discussed about her uh, plan to come here, but she couldn't um, come to New York because uh, her family wanted her to be around, around March 11th. Because <laughs> even two years had passed, but March 11th and the consequent nuclear disaster is such a painful experience for Japanese community. So um, instead, we collected uh, voices of women and children from Fukushima. And uh, Emily McGrown um, from Peaceful US is going to <coughs> share some of those voices so that you have some idea as to what people are going through. Um, Thank you. Uh, please welcome um, Ms. Emily McGrown. My name is Emily McLeone, and I'm working as the director of a nonprofit international organization called the Peace Boat. We have an office here in this building, and we also have economic and consultative status with the United Nations. Um, we've been working together with Human Rights Now for years, promoting uh, the protection of the right of the people. And Peace Boat not only focuses on human rights, but also on environmental sustainability, which has a lot to do with this nuclear accident in Fukushima. We have our main office in Tokyo, and last year we participated in the Rio Plus 20 United Nations Conference for Sustainability in Brazil. And during that trip, we invited four members from Fukushima to join us and share their testimonies to promote a world with renewable energy and no nuclear power. So I wanted to share a few of the voices from six women and children from Fukushima today that could not join us at this important event. Uh, one of the women who joined us in Rio Plus 20 at the conference was Miyuki Homa, a young woman from Fukushima. So I'll read these six messages for you. My generation is regarded neither as adults or as children. Being a kind of in-between, we are often out of media focus when it comes to the information on radiation. We tend to react to the situation by getting an internal exposure test and such. Although people often tell me that I should get out of Fukushima, it is very hard for me to leave my favorite hometown, family, and friends behind. As I continue to stay in Fukushima, I'd like to live without losing the idea that this is a contaminated area. Miyuki Homa. I always felt very lucky to be able to raise my children in Fukushima Prefecture, where nature was abundant. Since March 11th, however, I have been fearful of the invisible radiation. At night, I feel uneasy about how much radiation my child was exposed to during the day. I am angry and I also have a hard time as a parent because I'm not satisfying my child's everyday desires. These include playing with kindergarten friends in the schoolyard or a park, getting a bike and riding around, and growing vegetables in our yard. Yoko Ikeda. We are sorry that we damaged the earth and nature, even though we didn't do anything wrong. March 11th was my birthday. I never imagined that the kind of thing would happen on that day. I stayed home for a couple of days after the earthquake. When we finished all the food we had and were left with no water, we moved to my husband's parents' house in Saitama. I felt happy to be able to eat as much as we steamed white rice and other vegetables. And since we had to share stored food little by little back home, it was a pleasure to eat with the family. I realized then how wonderful it was to breathe fresh air, drink water, and use electricity as though they were free. And how fortunate it was to take a bath, do laundry, and sleep well. I watched the news about the reactors on TV every day and I feel sad about the fact that the chemicals we produced are damaging the nature, the earth, the air, the ocean, plants, fish, and animals. 
I just wish us safe and for the reactors, which we have worked for, for 40 years. I also have a wish for Americans. Please do whatever you can to prevent more mistakes like these. I don't want to see any more people suffering from reactors. It is my utmost wish. Akiko Yamada. Exposed to radiation, exposure to radiation is unavoidable. Fukushima's ground has been contaminated. I have to accept this reality. I don't believe the words of the media nor the government. Is it fair for me to have children? We cannot breathe the air or drink water freely. Our ordinary daily lives have been interrupted. Although I feel like being crushed by fear and anxiety, I will not give up my hope. Even if we fail, we have to save lives for our future children. I hear the mother's desperate cry. I see lots of tears. Still, those cries and tears cannot get through to the people who close their hearts. What can I do to help human beings to regain their soul back as real human beings? We have to forget the idea that I am the right one. In order to change the world, we have to change ourselves. Now we will begin the challenge to ourselves. Anonymous. Fukushima resident. My children cannot play outside freely as much as they want. I believe they will never be able to play outside without wearing protective masks. I do not care about my future, but I am so anxious about my children's future. My children and I are continuing to do what we can do, no matter how anxious we are. Noriko. I would like to get married and have children in the future. I want to have a family in Fukushima if I can. I also want to stay in Fukushima because I'm planning to take care of my parents. I think radioactive contamination will continue throughout our children and grandchildren's generation. I worry what will happen to our environment and what kind of physical effect will keep happening to our bodies over the generations. I sincerely hope that things like this will never happen in any other city, prefecture, or state in the world a single woman in her 20s from Fukushima. These are the stories of six women and young girls who were not able to be here today, but we wanted to share their messages. And I believe that these are heartwarming messages that hopefully will give you an idea of what the people are facing every day in their daily lives. We're so lucky to be here in the United States in a place that hasn't been contaminated yet. But what happens if Indian Point, which is so close, has another nuclear meltdown just like Fukushima? I was living in Tokyo when the nuclear accident happened in Japan. I was there for 10 years working for Peace Boat and recently relocated to New York. However, when I found out that Indian Point was so close by, I couldn't believe it. And I just thought, there was no evacuation plan for Tokyo. And what happens if there's a nuclear accident right here in New York City? So I hope all of you today um, have learned a little bit from the messages that you've heard from our residents from Japan and from our guest speakers from PSR who are really taking an, uh, an advantage of learning about the health effects, which is something that nobody can deny. And I think that um, throughout this week, we've had many events related to Fukushima, and hopefully we can all take this, and not just let this be one week in March that we speak out about this issue, but continue to share these stories with friends, relatives, and coworkers, and continue to work towards a nuclear-free world. Thank you very much.